Today, we're jumping right into the fun stuff. We're talking about one of the most important conversations that doctors never have. <laughs> See, the average medical doc receives about 19 hours of nutrition education over four years of schooling, and that's a lot. In fact, 25% of schools reach that, but most don't. And they learn about things like malnutrition and scurvy and rickets and not about nutrition for optimal health, or how to use food as medicine, or how to use nutritional therapies. I strongly believe that food is medicine, and that it should be not an afterthought in medicine, but the foundation of medical practice. There is no better drug on the planet. Did you know that up to 90% of Americans are not getting enough of the nutrients that are critical for healthy functioning? And that more than that are probably low if you look not just at what's needed to prevent some deficiency disease, but what's needed for optimal health. Over 98% of Americans are deficient in omega-3 fats, 80% in vitamin D, 50% in magnesium, 10% in vitamin C at the level that would cause scurvy. What's worse, these nutrient deficiencies can compound over the years and may continue to cause issues for decades. You know, we talk about nutrient deficiency, we often talk about acute deficiency like rickets or scurvy or beriberi or iron deficiency anemia and lots more. But there's something called long latency deficiency diseases. So how much vitamin D do you need not to get rickets? Not so much, 30 units. How much do you need not get osteoporosis? Probably three to 4,000 units a day. How much folate do you need to not get anemia? Not very much. How much do you need to prevent heart disease, cancer, and dementia, and a lot, you need a lot more. Every single chemical reaction in our body needs enzymes. And every single reaction needs a coenzyme or helper. And guess what coenzymes are? They're vitamins and minerals. Guess how many chemical reactions happen in the body every second? A thousand? A million? Nope. 37 billion billion. That's 37 with 21 zeros every second. And that is why a diet that's rich in whole foods, that's got lots of vitamins and minerals, is essential to health. Calories are abundant in our life, but the majority of Americans are deficient in one or more vitamins or minerals at the minimum amount to prevent a deficiency disease. That's right, we're overfed and undernourished. So how do you know if you're one of the 90% that's lacking in something essential? Well, you can test to find out. You can also just take a good multivitamin fish oil and vitamin D, which will take care of most of it. Now, there are only a few nutrients that are normally tested for. For most of these, doctors don't know what the normal values should be or the optimal values, which makes correcting the deficiency pretty hard to do. One of the most crucial nutrients you need to measure, especially if you have an autoimmune condition or really anything is vitamin D. Now, while it's called a vitamin, it's actually more like a hormone. It's made from cholesterol. Yes, we see yet another reason why cholesterol is important. 80% of the population is deficient in vitamin D at the optimal level. And unless you're running around naked in the sun for 20 minutes between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day, and you live south of Atlanta, you need to supplement with vitamin D. But in order to supplement correctly, you need to know what level you're starting at first. For example, your optimal blood level of vitamin D should be between 50 and 80, and that's in nanograms per milliliter. You should take about two to 4,000 units of vitamin D supplement, which is about the amount that most people can tolerate safely and will be helpful. Now, if you have much lower levels, you, if you have genetic issues, you may actually need a lot more, up to 10,000, but you should really work with a practitioner who can measure and test what's going on to actually help you optimize those levels. Now, most supplements contain just 400 units or about 10 times less than most of us need. The normal ranges are often just 20 and over. Now, this is way too low. In one study, women who had levels between 45 and 60 reduced preterm labor by 60%. That would save our healthcare system billions of dollars in untold suffering. Vitamin D is also important for your immune function, to build strong bones, strong muscles to prevent cancer and help you live longer. It's amazing. Now, another measurement that's done by virtually every doctor, but might not be interpreted correctly, is something called the M 
CV. That stands for mean corpuscular vol volume. It's basically the size of your red cells. And this is found in a test called CBC, or complete blood count, which is the most common panel ever ordered by doctors. Now, the MCV is a measurement that tells us how large your red blood cells are. If you are lacking in specific nutrients, then your cells will either get larger or smaller. When your cells are too big, it's a sign of folate or B12 deficiency. And B vitamins are essential for hundreds and thousands of chemical reactions in the body. They help us produce energy. They help normalize gene expression so that we can build the right proteins that will ensure health. If it's too low, it can mean iron deficiency, or anemia, or a genetic disorder. But the cutoff is usually not right. Normal is over 100 and under 70. But the ideal should be really 80 to 90. Supplementing with a B-complex vitamin can be a simple fix, but as a reminder, we must always ask why. Why would someone be deficient in B vitamins? Is their diet not providing enough? Are they vegan? Are they taking a medication like an acid blocker that prevents B12 absorption? This is where you need to keep digging and looking. B vitamins can become depleted in times of high stress, which as a practicing doctor, I confidently say makes up a majority of the population. Now, MCV is not the only measurement that looks at B vitamin status. Homocysteine is another important marker, and we're going to talk about that more in future videos. But it's also a measurement of status of B12, folate, and B6. An elevated MCV or an elevated homocysteine only tells us that one or more of these nutrients is likely deficient. It doesn't tell us necessarily which one. So there's some follow-up testing you have to do. Methylmalonic acid, or MMA, is another test that most doctors don't do that looks at your functional levels of B12. Now, this nutrient is so important for so many things in your body, like energy production. It's critical in gene expression, methylation, nerve function, mood, pretty much everything. Dementia. Vegans have a high likelihood of being deficient in B12 because it's only found in animal products. Folate is another important B vitamin. It can be measured directly in the blood, but homocysteine is a much more sensitive marker of functional folate status. Okay, we're going to touch on genetics in this section because there is a measurement that can tell you a lot more about your B vitamin status and your ability to use these vitamins. So here's what our genes do. Our genes make proteins. We have 20,000 genes and they code for proteins. One third of all the proteins they code for are enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts that convert one molecule to another molecule. And these enzymes are dependent on certain nutrients. Now, one of the most important genes that can go awry, can be a variant, basically, is something called MTHFR. The medical term is methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, but you don't have to worry about that. It's just called MTHFR. And it's so important because it regulates our methylation, homocysteine, folate, which are critical for our health. So if you have elevated homocysteine levels of over eight, you should check your meth methylation status, this MTHFR gene. And it's a simple blood test. Methylation is a key biochemical process that's essential for the proper function of almost all of your body systems. It occurs billions of times every second. It helps repair your DNA on a daily basis. It controls homocysteine, which is an unhealthy compound that can damage blood vessels, linked to cancer, dementia, and heart disease, and much more. It helps recycle molecules that you need for detoxification and getting rid of toxins. We're going to talk about that later. And it helps maintain your mood and also helps keep inflammation in check. So it's really critical. To keep methylation running smoothly, you need the optimal levels of B vitamins. And without enough of these B vitamins, the methylation breaks down and the results can be kind of catastrophic. In these cases, we see more birth defects like spina bifida, more Down syndrome, more miscarriages. So this is a very important process, a very important step in enzyme, and this MTHFR is often abnormal in about 35% of the population and leads to issues here. A breakdown in methylation also puts you at higher risk for things like osteoporosis and diabetes, cervical dysplasia or cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, depression, pediatric cognitive dysfunction, things like mood and behavioral disorders, dementia, stroke. It's a lot of stuff, so it's a really important biochemical process. Whenever we talk about genetics, we must realize the genetics load the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger. So what if you have this MTHFR variation in your genes? Well, first of all, not every mutation means that there's an issue. A mutation, for example, of one version of the gene called C667T is more significant than one called A1298C. 
Now, you don't have to worry about that number, but it's just to tell you that there are variations in the quality of these genes and how they work. And it's a sign that you might need extra help. So if you have, for example, this gene, you might need extra folate or you might need a special form of folate called methylfolate. And that's where a functional medicine doctor can really help you. But don't get stressed. If you did a genetic home test and you find out you have one of these variations, there's a lot you can do. Many patients have come to my office because they've read a book or listened to a podcast and it says they're doomed because they have this one variation in their genes. Well, let me tell you, you're never doomed. You always have the option to take control of your health. In fact, what you control is not your genes, you control your gene expression. And when you change your nutrient levels, you change your health habits, you change your environment, you can transform which genes are turned on and off. And exactly with this gene, you can do the same by having the right nutrients. So this is a really important, it's a one piece of the puzzle. And when you find a functional medicine practitioner to work with, they're gonna tell you about why it's important, how to modify your diet, what supplements you need, and, and other recommendations so you don't get any of these downstream bad problems. So that was just the B vitamins. So we should move on to one of the other biggest powerhouses in your body, it's a mineral, magnesium. Magnesium is a super essential mineral. 48% of Americans consume less than the required amount of magnesium from food. This miracle mineral is required in over 300 chemical reactions in the body and is essential for the production of ATP, which is the energy that our body uses. Your car uses gas, your body uses ATP. Your doctor can order a red blood cell magnesium level to see if you're deficient in it. And the regular magnesium level that doctors check, which is serum magnesium, is not very helpful. Red cell is better, again, it's not perfect. It's been called the relaxation mineral because it has the ability to reduce anxiety, to calm your nervous system, improve sleep. It also is an important nutrient in controlling your blood sugar. So if you've noticed you have an average blood sugar of over five and a half, it's something called the A1C, then magnesium may be something you should think about. The best way to test it is not the way most doctors do with the serum magnesium. You need to check the red blood cell magnesium. It's a better but still not perfect test. Also, taking a diet and symptom history, you can pick up clues about magnesium deficiency. Are you eating magnesium rich foods like nuts and seeds and greens and beans? Or maybe you're just eating processed food. Maybe you have symptoms like constipation, anxiety, insomnia, palpitations, muscle twitching, muscle cramps, PMS. If you have any of those symptoms, you probably have magnesium deficiency. Now next is zinc. That's your immune boosting and testosterone producing mineral. It's responsible for maintaining your hair volume as well as repairing your gut lining. It's super important for your thyroid to work properly. And it's another nutrient that can be easily measured in the blood and which we're really deficient in in America. In addition to plasma zinc level, you can also look at your level of alkaline phosphatase. That's on your liver function test on the regular panel. Now, while high levels of alkaline phosphatase need to be looked at by your doctor because they can be signs of cancer, or bone issues, or other problems, low levels can indicate a zinc deficiency because it's a zinc dependent enzyme. The last nutrient we're gonna discuss is iron. Now iron is another nutrient that I commonly see deficient in vegans and vegetarians, as well as women in general because they're losing blood through menstruation. Iron is essential for transporting oxygen and the energy through your body, which means it's super essential for brain health. It's important for sleep and for hair and nails and so many other things. Now ferritin is a storage form of iron and is one of the ways to actually look at your iron stores and look at iron levels. Ferritin levels should be between 50 to 150 in women and 100 to 300 in men. I can't tell you how many times I see women with ferritin levels less than 50 or worse in the single digits. That's because premenopausal women lose blood each month due to their menstrual cycles, which makes it hard to maintain levels depending on their diet. Many women are also under eaters, which also makes achieving optimal levels really hard. Now, ferritin is high. It could be a sign of inflammation, or often caused by insulin resistance and sugar, or it could be a sign of a genetic disorder called hemochromatosis or iron storage disease, which can be very dangerous. Now, one of the things also about low ferritin is if you have it, it can make you tired, it can cause hair loss, it can cause insomnia. So even if your blood count's normal, if your ferritin's low, your storage tank, in other words, your bank account of iron is low, it can cause these symptoms. Now, I can't stress enough 
how important it is to test your ferritin levels, especially if you have fatigue. And it can be such a quick and simple fix if it's caught. So besides ferritin, a low MCV can also tell you if you're iron deficient. Now iron deficiency causes our blood cells to become really small and that reflects in this low MCV level which measures the size of your red cells. In addition, transferrin saturation, serum iron, TIBC or total iron binding capacity and hemoglobin gives us a more in-depth look at your iron status and can help you distinguish different causes of anemia. Those are just on a regular iron panel and a lab test. So we just discussed a handful of nutrients that can be ordered by nearly every physician with conventional lab testing. In addition to these tests, we also have a test that can tell us more about what kind of nutrients and other support we need based on our genes. It's called the DNA Health Test by a company called DNA Life. It looks a lot at of different genetic markers related to detoxification, related to lipid metabolism, related to inflammation. It looks at a lot of different genetic markers, including the MTHFR and other B vitamin markers, which we looked at earlier today. So let's just take a quick look. This is the, the test we use. Um, it is called DNA Health. Uh, and when you look at the, the pages, you'll see there's different genes that we analyze. These are common genes. They're things we can do something about. These are not genes that are gonna destine you to some horrible fate. They're looking at genes that we can modify based on your diet, lifestyle, other factors, nutrients. And, and in this version, you can see the MTHFR genes are there. Other B vitamin markers are there. Genes, genes that regulate B12, B6, folate, and how they're working or not working. And then it tells us what to do, which nutrients to give you, which form of the nutrients, how much we need to give you. So it's really helpful. I mean, I remember a patient once who had uh, two different versions of the MTHFR, which is the folate regulating gene. And she had miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. She read, read a blog of mine. She had her doctor do the test. It was showing that she had this problem. He gave her the right kind of folate and she started having beautiful, healthy babies. It, sometimes it's that powerful and that simple. So this DNA health test is really a great option to individualize your approach to optimizing your health based on your genetics. Now we're gonna be learning more and more about how to do this over time because we're just at the infancy of the stage of personalized nutrition and genetics. But the things that we're testing with the DNA health test are well established and very helpful and give you lots of insight about your risks and biology that you can do something about. Now there's one other test that can be run by a well-trained functional medicine doctor that will give you information about what your current nutritional status test is. It's called the micronutrient test or the individualized optimized nutrition profile or the ion panel. At the Ultra Wellness Center, in our center in Massachusetts, our team uses this test. It's by Genova. Now it tests for all the essential vitamins and minerals, fatty acids, organic acids, antioxidants. It's a really robust test that I love. It's sort of like a snapshot or 100,000 mile checkup of all your numbers so you can see where the potholes are. It's not looking for disease, it's looking for imbalance or insufficiencies or deficiencies. So this test is called the ion panel and it's essentially a nutritional snapshot. And it looks at things that most doctors never look at. And you're not gonna get this when you go to the doctor for your checkup. It's like uh, lifting up the hood and looking at what's really happening and it gives you an idea of what's really going on with the person. So we look at amino acid levels. We look at your mineral levels. We look at some toxins like heavy metals, mercury, lead, arsenic, and so forth. We look at your antioxidant levels, levels of vitamin A and vitamin E and and also CoQ10 and antioxidant status, beta carotene. I can tell if someone's eating a vegetable or not. <laughs> if they have low levels, for example, beta carotene, they probably don't eat any vegetables. It looks at vitamin D levels. It also looks at your essential fatty acids, which are your omega-3 fats, your omega-6 fats. I can tell if you're eating junk food. I can tell if you're eating fish. I can tell if you're eating too much olive oil or saturated fat. It's all in there. And then, uh, also looks at something called organic acids. We're gonna talk more about that. It's called an oat test, organic acids test. And this is a very powerful test that looks at a whole series of parameters around your mitochondria, which we're gonna talk about in a later video, around your B vitamin status, around your neurotransmitters, around detoxification, around B vitamin levels, around your gut flora. So it's a really comprehensive test. And when I get this test, I really know if someone's sick or well, I know where the imbalances are, and I know how to fine tune my recommendations. And it also provides clues about other problems. For example, if your amino acids are low and your mitochondria are screwed up and you have a lot of oxidative stress and you have low selenium and zinc, I probably can guess that you have some toxic overload. Maybe it's heavy metals. And then I go looking for that. So it gives me a lot of information about what to do with the patient. And again, you have to have an experienced functional medicine doctor who knows how to do this. 
uh, and it can be useful in difficult cases to try to figure out what's really going on with the patient. Or if you just want to super optimize your health, it can also be used for that. So before we wrap up, uh, as good functional medicine doctors do, let's ask the question, why? Why are so many Americans overfed and undernourished? Why do we eat too many calories and too few nutrients? The main reasons for the widespread nutrition deficiencies are the following. One, we evolved eating wild foods that contain dramatically higher levels of all vitamins, minerals, and essential fats. The nutrient density of our diet was so high. Two, the soil we grow our crops in is depleted. So the industrial farming, the hybridization techniques that we use are yielding animals and vegetables that we eat ha and have much fewer nutrients. Three, processed factory farm foods basically have no nutrients. That's why they have to be fortified. They're fortified because they're so depleted in the first place by processing. And four, the total burden of environmental toxins, the lack of sunlight, chronic stress, all the foods we're eating and not eating, alcohol, caffeine, sugar, all lead to much higher nutrient needs and we're just not getting it from our diet. These are the same reasons that make supplementation necessary. Food is no longer enough in this modern world. I always joke, I say, you don't need any vitamins but only under certain conditions. One, you only hunt and gather your own wild food. Two, you're exposed to no environmental toxins. Three, you sleep nine hours a night. Four, you have no chronic stress. A five, you go to sleep uh, with the sun and wake up with the sun every day, and you only drink pure clean water and breathe pure clean air. Now, if uh, that's you, then no, you don't need any vitamins, but for the rest of us, yeah, we do. So this wraps up this video. As always, check out the Hacking Your Healthcare room in the Commune community for the latest discussions about this course and functional medicine. No question is a bad question. Don't be shy, speak up. We wanna hear from you. And stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we'll talk about Hormones. Hormones influence nearly every aspect of our health. And most doctors don't understand what optimal hormone levels look like or even when to test them or what to do about it once they do. But testing hormones should be common practice. I cannot tell you how many patients I've seen that have been to a bunch of doctors, but they have never had a comprehensive blood panel run or a full look at hormones. It's so important to get the entire picture of what's going on, not just the bare minimum. And that's why day four of how to work with your doctor to get what you need is gonna zoom in on the exact labs to ask for when it comes to hormones and your overall wellness. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed this lesson. We have more lessons on the way, so click the notification bell below so you don't miss our weekly videos. I'll see you there.